All right. Uh, let's bring in defense attorney Brian Claypool as our coverage continues on News Nation Now. Brian, you heard Dan Abrams there a few minutes ago on our show saying I had asked Dan, I said, you know, in the OJ trial years ago, was it, you know, was it the moment with the glove? Was that what did it? Is that? And he says, no, no, no. It was the jury, jury selection. Your thoughts? Dan, or I'm sorry, Connell, Dan Abrams is absolutely correct. In fact, I am friends with Gil Garcetti. Gil was the district attorney when the OJ case went down. And if you interviewed him, I am sure that he would tell you that if he could do it again, he would not have transferred that case from Santa Monica to downtown Los Angeles. Why? Just so your viewers know, in Santa Monica, it's near the ocean. It's West Los Angeles. It's predominantly white, conservative, white collar folks in that area. When you move into downtown Los Angeles, you have a lot more minority mix in L.A., a lot more uh, liberal folks in downtown L.A. And, and I think what can be learned from the O.J. trial is is you need to be aware if you're a prosecutor in any part of the country, not just L.A., about the racial mix of your jury and how sensitive they are to, to, to racial animus in this country, because that can play in into factoring how juries rule on a case. In addition to that, as a lawyer, what would you say about the actual prosecution of those days, Marsha Clark and, and Chris Darden, as well as the investigation? I mentioned Mark Furman earlier in the show and how all of that was handled, in addition to the jury. Yeah. Great question. I, I, one thing that Dan said I'm not sure I agree with is I do think it was sloppy with the glove. Why do I, why do I mean that? Because think about it, Connell. The, the, jury, the jury already going into the case is, is probably inclined to lean a little bit toward O.J. because of the racial chemistry of the jury. So they need something. They need some kind of evidence or lack of evidence to, to hook their hat on the horn and say acquittal. Hmm. That's what they're looking for. And they got that one thing that was so incredibly sloppy with the glove. And that, that led to them with the acquittal. That one piece of evidence, in my opinion, blew the whole trial. What does that mean for the future? If you're a prosecutor, I don't care how strong you think your case is, you better have every, every I dotted and every T crossed and every piece of evidence secured. And you better know what a witness is going to say on the stand before you confront them like they did in, in the uh, OJ case. Amazing stuff, really, when you think back on it uh, so many years ago. I want to bring this back to the present day for a moment and talk about how some, maybe some of this could be applied to the, this present day trial that we've been talking about with, uh, with Daybell, Chad Daybell out in Idaho, okay? So this is a triple murder trial that you, you and I, I think, have spoke about in the past. It was crazy stuff with the uh, kind of doomsday cult and all this kind of talk. But anyway, uh, you know, uh, three people died. The death penalty is on the table. I'll go to the latest testimony today, and then we can come back and talk about this. This is the lead detective in... Uh, in testimony at the Daybell trial. Let's watch. We just keep excavating slowly around this green object that started to come through the dirt the first day. So it started to take a shape, a roundish shape, when we began digging down and methodically removing dirt. And at that point, we could start to see what appeared to be uh, the shape of, of a green melted bucket. Um, all right. So then talking about how this, you know, the body was wrapped inside of all of this at the end of that testimony. And then you have a trial here where this guy is facing these murder charges. And again, the death penalty is on the table, different than uh, the previous trial where we already had a conviction, no death penalty on the table. How do you see it going? Yeah, I mean, this is another example of what we're talking about, Connell. I mean, if you're looking at this case purely from an emotional standpoint, like the OJ case too, right, mm -hmm. where emotions are running high, then it looks like, hey, this this, this could be a slam dunk. This guy's clearly guilty. Uh, you know, the, the kids are found in his backyard. You know, this guy's going to go to jail for the rest of his life or get the death penalty. Right. But there's a jury instruction that says you can't rule on a case based on emotion. Why is that important here? Because Daybell, he's got two... Two major defenses here. Uh, he's going to he's going to blame it on on his wife. He's going to blame it on her. She's already been convicted. Right. And he's also going to say, hey, there's no DNA. There's no fingerprints. There's no hair around those plastic bags of the kids. And there's nothing on the kids of my DNA. And in fact, Connell, I think the prosecutors made a big mistake in trying the, the wife before they did Chad Day Daybell. Oh, really? The reason they, they should have tried him first 
and then had her testify against him, dump it at his doorstep, and then cop a deal with her where she still spends a lot of time in jail, but she can ensure that he's convicted and he goes to jail. Now she's not, you're not going to see her at all in this trial testifying. So it sounds like you think, and on a day when we're having so many conversations about maybe the most famous uh, creation of reasonable doubt in you know, American history, that there might be some that's able to be created here. And I wonder if, it, because this is a death penalty case, that is, is that easier uh, for a defense to create reasonable doubt in death penalty cases? Have you seen that? Or? That's a great question. I, I, I think it's, it's a little bit easier because the stakes are so high, right? Somebody's life is at stake here. And, and, and this really does resonate with the O.J. case. I mean, I mean, didn't you think when you saw all the evidence in O.J., this guy, how, how's he ever going to get off, right? Mm -hmm. and here, I, I look at this and I'm like, how's this guy ever going to get off? But right. look, by virtue of her going to trial first, she's convicted of murder, she's going to jail the rest of her life. That's part of his defense now, Connell. He's saying she's crazy. Right. She's a nut. She did it. And, and, and there's no evidence that, that I did it. So it is going to create a quagmire. I don't think this is a slam dunk case. Prosecutors got to learn from OJ and they better make sure they've got everything sealed perfectly in this case to get a conviction. All right, Brian, Brian as always, uh, we appreciate it. Thanks for coming on.